In this video, we're asked to express the following in the form x plus iy, where x belongs to reals and y belongs to reals. So these are currently in Cartesian form. What we're going to do is employ De Moivre's theorem. We've shown that if we have now r to the n and cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n, we can write this as r to the n cos n theta plus i sine n theta and that's what we've been looking at in the videos we also need to appreciate that these are in cartesian form where z is equal to x plus i y we want them in polar form where z is going to be equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta let's take this one right here this one looks uh, nice and interesting what we're going to do is just draw up an argon diagram and this isn't essential, but if we think about this now, what we're going to have, let's make that straight, we're going to have the complex number 1 minus i, and that's going to be down here. Let's just take 1 minus i to be around here, okay? So let's put that on there. And we're just going to deal with that to begin with. We're going to look at this to the power of 6 as we employ De Moivre's theorem. So it's going to be 1 minus i. To put it in form, uh, the polar form, r cos theta plus i sine theta, first thing we need is r. r is the absolute value of z, or the square root of x squared plus y squared. Quite clearly, we're going to have now a modulus of the square root of 1 plus 1, which gives us r is going to be equal to root 2. So the distance from the origin to that complex number is root 2. Let's now look at a principal argument. The principal argument is measured from negative to positive pi, and it's given as the inverse tangent of y over x. So this gives us theta, which is our, our principal argument. Now, what we've got here is the inverse tangent, and I'll write it just here, the inverse tangent of, now, negative 1 over 1, which is going to give us theta, our principal argument is going to be negative pi by 4. So what we can now write up here is the following. Let's just get a shot of that. We can write now that z is going to be equal to, so we've got z is going to be equal to r, which we found to be root 2, cosine of negative pi by 4 plus i sine of negative pi by 4. What we're interested in here is z to the power of 6. So what we're going to do is rewrite this, and I'm going to say z to the 6. Let's just write two, uh, root 2 as a power. That's going to be 2 to the half power raised to the power of 6. And then we're going to have cos of uh, negative pi by 4. And this is where we employ De Moivre's theorem of sine of negative pi by 4 all to the power of 6. We can quite clearly see that z to the 6, this is going to give us, using our rules of indices, 2 cubed. Now 2 cubed is going to give us 8. 6 times by half is 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. We now use De Moivre's theorem, and this is going to give me cos of negative 6 pi by 4, which we can simplify to negative 3 pi by 2, plus i sine of negative 3 pi by 2. If we add 2 pi to the argument, we can see that z to the 6 is going to be equal to 8. We'll have cos of pi by 2 plus i sine of pi by 2. If you were asked to leave that in polar form, that's what we'd have right there. What we're going to do, though, is evaluate this. Now, what we can say is z to the 6 is going to be 8. The cosine of pi by 2 is 0. The sine of pi by 2 is going to be 1. So we simply end up now with z to the 6 is equal to 8i. And we could now go ahead and show that on the argon diagram if we wished. And we'd simply put it on the imaginary axis. Remember, we've got the real and imaginary axis. Here is real z. So we can have real z and imaginary z. And we could put it on just here and we could say that that was 8i and that is 1 minus i to the power of 6. So nice and straightforward-ish, all you've got to know 
its de Moivre's theorem and simply be able to convert between Cartesian and polar form.